exactly what I had. There it is. Thank you so much. Sam, are you busy? Well, I've got the summit conference in 10 days. The Russians are giving me a headache. And suddenly, I've got a molar that's giving me a toothache. What's wrong with your tooth? Oh, it'll probably go away. It's not important. What can I do for you? Well, Nick has been studying up on Reykjavik for a school project. That's where you're having the summit. I knew that sounded familiar. <laughs> there are so many fascinating facts about Iceland. I thought you might want to hear some of them. <coughs> <coughs> Nick. Uh, what is the population of Reykjavik? 91,000. Height above sea level? 45 feet. What is its principal industry? A fertilizer factory opened wait, in... Wait, 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 hold. This is supposed to be Nick's project? Of course you didn't think I was making all that up, did you? Go on, Calvin. You're doing very well. Hey, what kind of government is uh, Reykjavik... Ex excuse me, if this is Nikki's project, why are you giving all the answers? But I want to show you how well I've prepared. Ah, prepared. Well, I'm going to need to be informed if I'm going to make small talk with diplomats' wives. Suddenly, my toothache is spreading throughout my entire body. Poor baby. <laughs> Lois, there's never been any thought of taking now, you... granted, I don't know how much small talk there is in a fertilizer factory. It would be more of a conversational icebreaker. Icebreaker, would you listen to me? I just... Lois, there's no way in hell I'm taking my sister-in-law oh. to Reykjavik. We don't need to have this discussion in front of the child. There is no discussion. It's out of the question. A head of state does not travel with a female companion. Well, what about a hostess for diplomatic receptions? A single man at a dinner party is such a drag. She's not a social event. It's a peace conference. Oh, I favor peace. Well, good. Then I'm going by myself, and that is the... Uh-oh. Daddy should have someone look at your tooth. It's only going to get worse. Well, uh, it'll wait. Certainly. Then later, when it abscesses, you can have it lanced in Reykjavik. I don't think it will abscess. Well, fine. But when it does, you'll be in very fine hands, because Eskimos love performing root canals. They use crude flint tools designed for whittling walrus tusks. <laughs> Come on, Nicholas. <laughs> very well. Here it is one week before the summit, and that Sanofko is doing everything in his power to sabotage it. Okay, Mr. President, if you'd like to open up now, please. I'll tell you, it'll be a miracle if the summit ever comes off. And yeah, Zanofko's a son of a bitch. Zanofko's their foreign minister. Yes, I knew that. That man has been a pain in the prat since the day of his birth. Yes, sir. Open. All oh, right. And he's been whispering to Gorbachev again about making reduction in NATO forces ah! a part. Hmm. Looks like we definitely have some sensitivity there, don't we? <laughs> Do you suppose, Dr. Robbins, that we could do something about our sensitivity? Yes, sir. Open. I mean, I'd like to get this over as quickly as possible. I understand. I have a very important meeting with the Russians next week. Yes, it's sir. It's bound to affect my negotiating position if I'm whimpering and drooling. <laughs> I'm sure it won't reflect too well on me either, sir. <laughs> have you care to open up, please? Oh, by the way, sir, I've spoken to Daniel. He's found a new Russian translator he wants you to meet. Ah, uh, how can I check again? His eyes on the stranger. I beg your pardon? He said, how the hell can you communicate with somebody if they can't understand you? <laughs> Thank you. It's a knack you pick up in this profession. <laughs> Maybe we should take you to Reykjavik. <laughs> oh, my. Look at that. No wonder. Oh, yeah. That is ugly looking. No, no, over here. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, that is too. Do you mind? Don't worry, Mr. President. Just let me get you numb. We'll have that fixed up in no time. Oh, Charlie, this summit between me and Gorbachev is too important to let some Cold War throwback like Zanofko mess it up. You'll keep trying. I'm counting on you to find somebody to deal with. Don't worry, sir. I can handle Zanofko. As you know. I have a real tough streak. Mm. Sometimes, tough <laughs> is the only language they understand. <laughs> so uh, if, uh, if they want to fight, open. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, 
Daniel's waiting outside with the translator. Uh, is there any way to keep Daniel outside and let the translator in? I don't think so, sir. Send him in. Mr. President, I'd like you to meet Karen Stark. <laughs> How do you do, Karen? It's an honor to meet you, sir. Uh, sit down, please. Thank you. You have to forgive the way I'm talking. I, I'm all shot full of Novocaine. Been to the dentist, sir? No, Daniel. I've just been through a grueling shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your qualification. PhD from Princeton, where she translated the complete works of Pushkin, sir. Uh, As you may know, that's... Would you mind letting her speak for herself, Daniel? I mean, you and I have the whole day to chew the fat about Pushkin. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, sir, we're running quite late this morning. Uh, I think we better tell just... Tell me, uh, have you ever been to Russia, Karen? I taught English at Moscow University while doing research on a biography I'm writing of Gogol. Hmm, Gogol. That's one, another one of Daniel's favorites. I tell you, hardly a day goes by around here. There isn't a little uh, Gogol this and Pushkin that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to check her background very thoroughly, sir. I'm on that already, sir. Mr. President, we can discuss this at another time. Charlie. Daniel, Miss Stark, would you excuse us? Sure. It's been a great pleasure meeting you, well, sir. The pleasure was mine. I'm looking forward Thank to... You, Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. What is the matter with you? I can't believe that guy would be so stupid as to suggest that... that cupcake as a presidential interpreter. A woman has a PhD. Sir, did you see her? I see. You can't accept the fact that she can be attractive and capable and intelligent. I'm thinking of public opinion, sir. How's it gonna look? A recently separated president traipsing off to Iceland with someone that young, that tall, that blonde? Charlie, <laughs> the president travels where and when he wants and with whom. My reputation is above reproach. Sam, I'm just thinking of appearances, mainly hers. <laughs> If I hire someone, it's because of her qualifications, period. And I am outraged, outraged at any suggestion to the contrary. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. It may be very well that she is a very gifted linguist. I hope so. But she sure is a cupcake. <laughs> something how can anyone not be in favor of disarmament easy by weakening your country's defense you increase the chances of conflict well that's a good point so a strong defense will actually promote peace no it will trigger an arms race that could lead to war right so the best thing is to reduce arms no that's the worst thing by doing that you invite military attack Cynthia what side of this issue are you on both sides See, it's, it's an assignment for my debate class. We have to take and defend the opposite side of any given argument. I think, well, that, that's a good assignment. People should be taught to see the other point of view. It's a bad assignment. People should be taught to stand up for their convictions. <laughs> well, well, of course, of course they should. But I, I, I meant that the, oh, I see what you're doing. Oh, that's cute. But, of course, you're right. People shouldn't be too wishy-washy. Well, it beats being rigid. Stop it. <laughs> oh, Cynthia, you have the encyclopedia there. Do you happen to know the national anthem of Iceland? Well, not offhand, but I'll see if it's in here. It's Oh, Good Force Lance. <laughs> Why do you ask? I wanted to share the information. <laughs> Heaven knows it's not going to do me any good. <laughs> the lovely anthem, actually, is very stirring. Now stop right there. There's not going to be any more discussion about your going to Iceland. Did I say a word? You see, Cynthia, your father's argument is that in-laws have no role at a summit conference. That's a very valid argument, some would say. What would you say to that argument, Cynthia? Uh, now, the other thing debate class teaches us is never to bite the hand that feeds you. Good night, Dad. Good night, sweetheart. <laughs> you know, I've got enough aggravation with this trip without you adding to it. Foreign Minister Zanofko still being a jerk. And Charlie doesn't like the translator I'm taking. What's wrong with him? Her. Her? 
Yeah, she's too young or too pretty or something. We have this scheduling problem. You're taking a young, pretty translator? <laughs> a highly qualified translator. The head of state who doesn't travel with a female companion... Employee. ...is schlepping some bimbo over the ice cap? <laughs> Sorry to barge in, Mr. President. Well, we've got a real emergency. Apparently, the CIA had some kind of a covert operation going, and their people just got caught smuggling arms to Ukrainian dissidents. What? The Russians are livid. This could be the worst crisis since the Bay of Pigs. Sure shoots the hell out of the summit conference. I think you can just forget all about your trip to Reykjavik. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> Charlie, I want his name. And then I want us hide. Well, everything seems to lead to a Captain Maddox. He's on his way over here now. How could this happen without our knowing about it? How could an arms shipment be authorized without our knowing about it? How can anything happen without our knowing about it? How should I know? <laughs> Sending grenade launchers to the Ukrainians. How is it that those grenade launchers were lying around all over the place anyway? They weren't government issue, sir. No, they're manufactured by a firm in Tennessee that sells them to legitimate sportsmen. <laughs> Our first priority, Mr. President, is to repair the damage. At all costs, we have got to try to salvage the summit conference. Yes, but is that even remotely possible now? We've certainly got to try, sir. I'm afraid you're going to have to make a full, formal apology to the Russians. Those lying hypocrites. They've armed half the third world. There isn't a spot on the globe they're not meddling with. Why should I apologize to them? Because we're clearly in the wrong on this one, sir. That's right. Yeah, you're right. OK. I hate truckling to those bastards, but I guess we don't have any choice. Who do I have to apologize to? Foreign ministers and off oh. <laughs> I'd rather have my guts wound out on a stick. Well, he's our pipeline to Gorbachev, sir. I suggest you invite Janofko and his wife here to the White House and see if you can dig us out of this hole. All right, all right, I'll do it. Uh, could you put that right there, please? Well, I really appreciate you doing this, Lois. For my country, Sam, not for you. <laughs> well, I'm not looking forward to it either, but it's got to be done. We have to treat this hyena and his gruesome wife as honored guests. Mr. President! Uh, Lois. Garrett. Mr. President. I'd like you to meet my sister-in-law, Lois Gullickson. This is Miss Stark, our translator. Happy to meet you, Miss Gullickson. Oh, my. You really are very qualified, aren't you? <laughs> well, I don't know whether I can go through this after all. Well, you have to, sir. The Zanofkos will be here any second. Apologizing to that snake. Your country will be grateful. Well, they'd better be. I mean, they're going to owe me big. <laughs> We're talking Mount Rushmore here, you know? At least. At least. Oh. Foreign Minister and Mrs. Zanofko, sir? Boris, good to see you. <laughs> Boris, how to show us the gym. Shame on you. The Foreign Minister learned that phrase just for this meeting. Uh -huh. Is that so? Мне нужна только одна английская фраза, когда я работаю с американцами. It's the only English phrase I need for dealing with the Americans. Ah, well, that's one point of view. Это одно дело. Maya, you're looking lovely as always. И Maya, вы красивая как всегда. Shame on you. Mrs. Zanovko wanted to learn the phrase too. Did she? Uh, you all know my chief of staff, Charlie Ross. Let me, Charlie Ross. This is my sister-in-law. Sister Amusia. Lois Gullickson. Oh, don't say it. I know. Shame on me. Конечно, американская женщина может всегда шутить, но вмешаться в внутреннее дело нашей страны – это не шутка. A lovely lady can always make a joke. Oh. <laughs> but meddling into a country's internal affairs is no laughing matter. True. So true. So very true. Well, why don't we all sit down? Oh, I, see I can offer you coffee, tea, vodka. Mogu ya vam pregložit coffee, chai, vodka? Chai. Tea for Mrs. Zanovko and uh, vodka for the foreign minister? I'll do the honors. Fine. 
Ваши американские кофе слишком агрессивные, слишком суровые. Your American coffee is too harsh and aggressive. <laughs> Оно окупает нутриентный систем и мешает его мировую функцию. It invades one's internal system and interferes with its peaceful functioning. Так точно, как ваш американский систем. Much as America itself does. Uh, so, Mrs. Zinovich. <laughs> You two kids meet. <laughs> totally unauthorized on any level. As I have explained and explained for the last 45 minutes. I don't know what else to say. I, except to offer you once again my country's full and unqualified apology. And my personal guarantee that it will never, ever happen again. Shame on you. Но, однако, в интересе мира мы принимаем ваши узнавания за эту длинную историю криминальных актов. However, in the interest of world peace, we accept your apology for this latest of many offenses. И теперь мы имеем надежду, что вы изучили ваш урок. And this time we hope you've learned your lesson. Thank you, Mr. Foreign Minister. Спасибо, иностранный министр. Я буду рекомендовать, чтобы мировая конференция подвигалась вперед. I will recommend that the peace talks go forward. Thank you. Иди сообщи нас немедленно. Mr. President, if you have no objection, we would like to notify our press people first. Oh, I'll be my guest. You have a phone I may use? Surely, Charlie, show it, will you please? Well, now that that's all settled, how about a little more vodka, Boris? We could eat some vodka. Oh, he, he doesn't need a translation <laughs> for vodka, do you, Boris? Um, uh, you know, Karen, I think we might just be finished with you for today. Are you sure, sir? Oh, I'm positive. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, well, Boris. Here's to mutual understanding. You foul bag of garbage. <laughs> uh, Sam, I, I... Smile, I, look, smile. <laughs> you know, you hypocrites are always talking a lot about... Uh, <laughs> Glasnost! 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 Well, you know where you can stick your Glasnost, don't you? Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I got Glasnost! Glasnost! Handy! And if you don't know, I'm sure that Madame Cellulite here can show you! Boy, I'll bet you're going to have to give them a lot of warning before you go back home. <laughs> so that they can let out the Iron Curtain. <laughs> oh, drink up my... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Drink up my... Drink up, uh, drink up. Uh, the glass note. I'm... Drink up the glass note. Drink you're starting to lose the color in your nose. <laughs> your thugs are out there disrupting half the world, and you have the nerve, the gall, to sit here and demand an apology. You really are a horse's ass. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Sa, say P, U, P, I. Uh, I'm glad you're back, Yuri. Because I was just saying to Boris here, and the little woman, <laughs> how glad I am to be able to meet face to face and to speak freely. You know, I've said things tonight that I've been wanting to get off my chest. 
for a long, long time. Я сразу сказал. And you know something? I feel good about it. Я хорошо чувствую. Знаете, скажи господину президенту, что он очень большой человек, сказать такие слова. Да. He says it takes a big man to say what you said. Well, you tell Boris that he's a big man too. Спасибо. And so is his wife. You know what I mean. Ну, дорогая, пойдем, пойдем. Well, my, you must come back again. I'll show you the rose garden. I'll give you a personal guide. Oh, Sam, I have never been so nervous in all my life. It was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> was it ever? <laughs> I couldn't have done it without you. Why, thank you, Sam. And you know, I think we have learned something now about just how helpful I can be in situations such as these. Yes. And you know something else, Lois? What is it, Sam? You're still not coming to Iceland. <laughs>